WWE is filled with iconic finishers, like The Undertaker's Tombstone Piledriver, Randy Orton's RKO, and many more. But who were the first people to kick out of these legendary moves? Not long after The Undertaker made his WWE debut, he found himself in a match against one of the company's biggest wrestlers, The Ultimate Warrior. While the Warrior got the better of the dead man at the start of the match, the Phenom quickly gained control and began wearing down The Ultimate Warrior. Finally, The Undertaker hit his finisher, the Tombstone Piledriver, but The Warrior shockingly kicked out, something no one had ever done before. The enraged Undertaker hit the Ultimate Warrior with his urn, ending the match in a disqualification. John Cena has five iconic moves, lovingly known by fans as the five moves of doom. The biggest and most powerful one on the list is the attitude adjustment, or as it used to be known, the FU. Cena was gonna need all of that and more when he took on the Undertaker in 2003. The dead man had been through just about everything in WWE, but John Cena was young and hungry and willing to do whatever it took. Cena smashed his opponent with his chain, allowing him to successfully execute the attitude adjustment. To everyone's surprise, and to John Cena's frustration, The Undertaker kicked out of the Doctor of Thugonomics finisher. Even worse, The Undertaker then hit Cena with his finisher and ended the match. After Seth Rollins betrayed the Shield and joined the Authority in 2014, Dean Ambrose made it his personal mission to make Rollins' life as miserable as possible. When the two were set to face off inside Hell in a Cell, this was basically like winning the lottery for Dean Ambrose. The lunatic fringe destroyed his former ally, even if it meant hurting himself in the process. Unfortunately, Seth Rollins had the authority nearby to help him out. This allowed Seth to hit his finisher, the curb stomp, and get the one, two, no! Dean Ambrose kicked out, something that had never happened up to this point. This was really impressive, but despite that, Seth Rollins still stole the victory thanks to some help from Bray Wyatt. This guy may have made himself famous by accident. Before he would start calling himself Triple H, the game was known by his full name, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. On an episode of Raw in 1996, Triple H had a match against a guy named Freddie Joe Floyd, who you may know better as Tracy Smothers. During the match, Mr. Perfect came out and took the game's valet away. After hitting the pedigree, Triple H saw this and ran after Mr. Perfect only to get knocked out with a punch to the face. However, let's rewind a bit. If you look closely, you'll see that Freddie Joe Floyd actually gets his shoulder up. I think this was an accident since Triple H would have stopped the pin himself. Freddie Joe Floyd accidentally wrote himself into the history books as the first person to kick out of Triple H's pedigree. WrestleMania 19 was special for many reasons, one of which was that it was the first time we saw Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle go one on one. The two destroyed each other in one of the most physical matches in WrestleMania history. Angle was desperate to win since his WWE Championship was on the line. Despite that, Brock Lesnar eventually executed his finisher, the F5. Kurt Angle surprised everyone though, including Lesnar, by kicking out, something that no one had done before. Despite that impressive accomplishment, it wasn't enough, and Lesnar ultimately won the match and the WWE Championship. In one of their early encounters, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bret Hart faced off at the 1996 Survivor Series. The winner of the match would receive a shot at the World title, so both men were willing to go the extra mile. No one had kicked out of the Stone Cold Stunner before, so when he saw an opportunity, Austin took it. He planted the hitman with his finisher and quickly went for the cover, but Brett was somehow able to get his shoulder up. Unfortunately for Steve Austin, not only had someone kicked out of the Stone Cold Stunner, but Bret Hart ended up winning the match as well. During the late 80s and early 90s, Hulk Hogan ruled WWE. He had a number of signature moves, but the Hulkster finisher was the leg drop. It may not be a as flashy as today's finishing moves, but nobody ever kicked out of the move. That was until Hogan wrestled a man named Gunichiro Tenryu. In 1991, WWE and a Japanese wrestling company called SWS ran a show together that pitted WWE's biggest star, Hulk Hogan, against SWS's biggest star, Gunichiro Tenryu. Both men threw everything they had at each other, and once an opportunity presented itself, the Hulkster hit Tenryu with the leg drop. But for the first time ever, it didn't win Hulk Hogan the match. Gunichiro Tenryu Ryu survived the Immortal One's finisher. Not only that, but later on, Hulk Hogan hit a second leg drop and Tenryu kicked out of that one as well. In fact, it was actually a clothesline that got the Hulkster the three count and won him the match. At Unforgiven 2003, Randy Orton took on Shawn Michaels in a match titled Legend vs. Legend Killer. Orton was younger and more energetic, while Michaels was older and more experienced. These two gave it 110%, which is one mistake being enough to cost them the match. At one point, it looked like Randy Orton had capitalized on that one mistake when he countered Sweet Chin Music into an RKO. However, HBK kicked out. When winning clean didn't work, the young Orton decided to get dirty. With some help from the dirtiest player in the game, 
Ric Flair, the legend killer was able to defeat the legend. From one member of Evolution to another, let's find out who was the first person to kick out of Batista's finisher, the Batista Bomb. At WrestleMania 20, every member of Evolution, except Triple H, teamed up to fight Mick Foley and The Rock in a 2 on 3 handicap match. Despite having the advantage, Flair, Orton, and Batista had a tough time taking out The Rock and Sock connection. However, thanks to a few cheap shots, Evolution was able to gain control. One of those cheap shots was when Batista snuck into the ring and hit Rock with a Batista bomb. Orton crawled over to get the pin, but somehow the Great One kicked out. However, an RKO was finally enough to get the 1-2-3. I do wonder if Mick Foley got in trouble backstage, since it looked like he barely sold Randy Orton's finisher. To Foley's credit, he isn't the first person to no-sell finishing move. To see those incidents, watch the video on screen.